Now for this question, I've started to sketch a diagram and I would strongly encourage you to do much the same. To sketch a diagram for the two particles P and Q with their masses of 3 kilograms and 2 kilograms. And then we look at the motion before the collision and then the motion after the collision. We mark on the velocities. Now we're told that P is moving towards Q at a speed of 3 meters per second. So I'd want to put in an arrow, something like this, saying that that's 3 meters per second. And we're told that Q is moving towards P before the collision at 2 meters per second. And then after they collide, both particles move in the same direction and the difference in their speeds is 1 meter per second. Well, if I was to guess which direction they're going to move after the collision, I would say it's got to be to the right because this one has a bigger mass and a bigger velocity, okay? So it's got more momentum than this one here. So it's going to move to the right. Now if I didn't get this right, it doesn't matter. Let the mathematics tell you that you've got it in the wrong direction you'll end up with a negative sign, a negative velocity if that was the case. OK, so they both have to move off to the right. Let's call this velocity here the final velocity for P, and this one the final velocity for Q. Now, we're told that they move away and the difference in their speeds is one meter per second. So already I can establish one equation. Let's just write this down that since the difference in the speeds, okay, difference in speeds, or in final speed, let's put it as final speed, equals one meter per second. That's telling me then that VQ minus VP must equal one. So therefore, VQ minus VP must equal 1. Remember, VQ's got to be a bigger quantity than VP because otherwise this one's going to keep banging into the back of Q if this was a greater speed. So VQ minus VP equals 1. And what I'm going to do is put this on hold for a moment because we've got two unknowns, so we're obviously going to deal with an simultaneous equations. We need another equation. So where do we get our other equation from? Well it has to be by the conservation of momentum, by the conservation of linear momentum. And hopefully you're familiar with the conservation of linear momentum. It's the momentum before impact, the total momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact. And momentum is mass times velocity. Now it's very important that we set up a positive sense when you're dealing with the conservation of linear momentum. And I'm going to take the positive sense to the right. You don't have to, but it just seems the sensible way to go because VP and VQ happen to be in that direction. If I take it to the right, okay, then we have the momentum before impact. So momentum is mass times velocity. So we'll start with this one here, P. So we've got the mass is 3, and we multiply it by the velocity, which is 3 meters per second, and it's in the positive sense. So it's going to be 3 times 3. Then we add to the momentum of Q. So mass again is 2 times the velocity. But you'll notice this time it's moving with a speed of 2 meters per second, but to the left in the opposite sense to the plus. So it's going to be minus 2. OK, so that's the total momentum now before impact, and this equals the total momentum after impact. So we start again, we do the mass of P, which is 3, and then we multiply it by the velocity of P, the final velocity, so that's going to be VP, it's in the positive sense. Then we add the momentum of Q, so it's going to be mass is 2, multiplied by the velocity of Q 
and after the impact. And that's going to be plus VQ because it's in the positive sense. OK, well, there's my second equation. It needs to be tidied up, but we'll be able to tidy that up and hopefully do some simultaneous equations. So from this, we therefore get 9 minus the 4. So that's going to be 5. So we've got 5 equals 3VP plus 2VQ. So I'm looking to see how I'm going to go about these simultaneous equations. Um, I think what I'm going to do is make, say, VQ the subject. Let's take VQ from here. So we've got, therefore, VQ equals 1 plus VP. Well, let's call that equation 1, and we'll call this equation 2. And what we'll do is sub, then, equation 1 into equation 2. So what's that going to give us? Well, we'll therefore have 5 equals 3VP plus 2 lots of VQ, which is now 1 plus VP. 1 plus VP. And if we expand the bracket, we've got 5 equals 3VP plus 2 plus 2VP. So we could subtract 2 from both sides, and we therefore have got 5 take 2, which is 3, and then we've got 3VP plus another 2VP, which is 5VP. So if we divide both sides now by 5, we've got VP equals 3 fifths. 3 fifths meters per second then for the final velocity of P. And all we've got to do now is just substitute this back into equation 1 to get VQ. So if we just say sub VP equals 3 fifths into equation 1, so we therefore have that VQ equals 1 plus VP, so that's 1 plus 3 fifths. And 1 plus 3 fifths is going to give us 8 fifths, 8 fifths meters per second. So therefore, we've just got to reply back to the question, what was the speed of P? Speed of P is equal to 3 fifths meters per second. And speed of Q after the impact, we found out, was 8 fifths, 8 fifths of a meter per second. Okay?